Hi guys, it's Hightech and I'm back with a new video. In the last few videos I had a lot of young people asking me what programming language they should choose to start when they want to start modding in the future. And in essence they are only Java and JavaScript so it shouldn't be that difficult, right? Now it isn't that simple, because for both languages there are other languages that build on top of them and which aim to clean out some of the issues that these languages had. And also for some people there was some confusion about the JSON thing. So let me start with this. JSON is the so-called JavaScript object notation. And to put it simple, it's just a format to notate data. It's especially useful for transferring data between different languages, or also to transfer JavaScript objects via the network. JSON can be used for almost everything in terms of data notation. But it isn't a programming language in itself. And believe me, it's quite easy to learn. In fact, it's so easy to learn that I will just teach it to you now. The main component of JSON is an object. It's opened and closed by the respective curly braces. These objects can contain any number of key pairs. This key pair consists out of a key, which is a string. So double quotation marks, anything you want, and another double quotation marks. If you want to include quotation marks in the string, you can use the backslash before the quotation marks. And if you want to use a backslash, you can do backslash backslash. The second part of a key pair is the value. And this can be a number of things. It can be null or nothing. It can be a boolean, so true or false. It can be any number, a string, an object, or an array which is surrounded by these respective square brackets. An array can contain anything that I mentioned before, even arrays. It can also be empty or contain multiple of these. When you have multiple of them, you can separate them by a comma. And that's JSON. Really, that's everything. So how is it being used in Hightail? Now, the developer said that it is for behavior scripting. Personally, I wouldn't go that far. It's more of a behavior definition. And because of that, it's very different from modding in Java or JavaScript. Both Java and JavaScript are imperative programming languages. That means that instead of saying, when there is an enemy around, then flee, you would say, search the area and give me all mobs. Now go through each mob, look if this is an enemy. If it isn't, then continue. If it is an enemy, turn so that their back is facing towards it and start running. As you can see, the second example, so the imperative, is mainly focused on how to do it. Whereas the declarative example is focused around what to do. So for a practical example, let's look at the given code we have here. Unfortunately, it isn't full code, but it makes quite a lot of sense. So what we have here is the respective code for what we see on screen. First on top, we have the key steps. And as you can see, it's an array, so we can have multiple steps. In our case, we can make out two objects. So let's go over the first object. It has three keys, the sensor, motion and actions. The sensor basically means when to do it. So we are setting up a sensor that looks for mobs in the range 10 and we only want to include bears. So we have the sensor and then a key type with the value mob, the key range with the value 10 and the key included groups with the value as an array which only includes bear. But you could also include multiple groups. After the sensor we have what to do. For the first thing my best guess is that this is how the mob moves, and maybe the different motion states of which one is watching, which would correlate with what we are seeing on the screen. And then we have the actions. It has an array as a value, but it only includes one action. In our case, this is an object of the type play animation. So obviously it's an action that should play an animation. Now for slot, I'm not quite sure what that means. But animation is obviously the type of the animation, which would be alerted in this case. So as you can see, when you do these JSON programming, I'll just call it like that, you can't really do anything to learn it right now, because everything is very game related and very specific to Hightail. So what is about JavaScript and Java? Now previously I had given a pretty simple answer, and that was if you are a mapper or adventure map creator, then learn JavaScript, and if you are a modder, then learn Java. But with the release of this blog post, this answer has complicated a lot. Now the first part stays absolutely the same. If you're only an adventure mapper, then learn JavaScript. Because when doing adventure maps, you're creating scripts for one-time use. Now if you're a modder or want to become one, to be honest I'm not quite sure. If you would create a mod like MooCreatures, you'd easily come around with just JSON and JavaScript. So I think I'll have to go a little bit deeper. So what are you trying to do? What do you want to add? Do you want to add a game mode? A specific mob? a block or a new structure, maybe a new biome or world or a new dungeon, I think you will just be fine with JavaScript and JSON. And it might even be that you can't do it with Java. So what do you need Java for? 
and probably you will need Java for things that are changing principles of the game mechanics. But this all depends on how advanced the JavaScript API is. So generally, if you're doing something that is intended by Hightail, or a variation of that, you'll probably be fine with JavaScript and JSON. But if it's something completely new, let's say an energy system, but I'm not even sure on that anymore. So let's just focus on JavaScript for the moment. I have to say personally, I hate JavaScript. And if there's something that I could do without it, I will do it without it. But that doesn't mean that you will hate it. At least I think for the most basic mods, you will just be fine with JavaScript. And with the in-game scripting feature, you'll probably get rewarded very quickly. Just be aware that when you're doing something bigger, JavaScript is often not a very good option. Java lacks in the areas of scalability, consistency and performance. And this is mainly down to it being a scripting language and not being type safe. Type safe basically means that you for example know exactly that this is a number and not a string for example. JavaScript lacks that feature. This makes it quite flexible and possibly more easy to understand for beginners. But I myself think that the output code is pretty ugly and you can get really strange issues. Now, if you want to do programming in the future, I'd also don't recommend you to start with JavaScript. And that's mainly because of its very high abstraction. Generally, there are like three levels. The lowest level is pretty difficult to learn and the highest level becomes very slow. Luckily, our modding language Java lies directly in the middle and it's pretty easy to learn and it's also not very difficult to switch to other languages like C or JavaScript. The moment you become comfortable in the language, it will be quite easy to adapt other languages because most of them have similar concepts. And also while we are on the topic of Java, I'll also need to do some advertising for my personal favorite language, which is compatible to Java, and that is Kotlin. I will do a video on this in the future where I will explain in specifics why I choose Kotlin over Java. For now, it's just important to know that Kotlin is 100% compatible to Java and can also be used 100% seamlessly. It eliminates the most common error in Java, which is a null pointer exception. You generally write less code with the same output and its syntax is a lot more friendly in general. It also is a bit more similar to JavaScript. Also, as a side note, you can compile Kotlin code to JavaScript, but that's something I've never tried. And it's also not nearly as seamless as Kotlin is to Java. So what is my final answer? If you are purely a mapper and you don't plan to do anything big with programming outside of Hightail, you'll probably be fine with JavaScript. Now for everyone else, you'll probably need both. But I recommend you to start with Java because it's a pretty good middle way and there are tons of tutorials out there and it's really easy to learn. Now if you have programmed before in another language like Python let's say, I would suggest you having a look at Kotlin. If you have some basic understanding of how programming languages work, most of the principles in Java can be transferred to Kotlin pretty much directly. It's just that Kotlin has a different syntax. If you start programming, your best friend will be Stack Overflow. It's a crazy site where basically every question you can imagine has been asked and has been answered by a really qualified person. Seriously, the people that are answering these questions are pretty crazy. Then also for Kotlin, don't be afraid to look at their wiki. It's one of the best I have ever seen and explains everything very simple. Many languages also have a playground integrated in the browser that you can find on their website, where you can try out the languages without installing anything. I'll link all these down in the description. If you want to get real serious, you'll probably need an IDE, so something you can write in the code. Now you could do real old fashioned and just put out the notepad, but you won't have much fun with it. So for Java and Kotlin, use the IntelliJ IDEA community. It's the best IDE I have seen out there and it's free. Now for JavaScript, I personally use WebStorm, but unfortunately there's no community edition out there. However, you can use Visual Studio Code, not to confuse with Visual Studio. VS Code is a really lightweight program that brings in all the basic features of an IDE. I'll probably start a Kotlin programming series in the future, but if you don't want to wait, there are a lot of good resources out there. You just need to find yourself a problem to solve, because programming really is something you can only learn by doing it. Other than that, have fun coding and take care until the next time. High Tech, out.